With that, let's bring in our leadoff panel. David Farenthold, Pres Pulitzer Prize-winning investigative reporter for The New York Times. He's covered the Trump family and its business interests. Catherine Christian, former assistant district attorney at the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. She's now an MSNBC legal analyst. And Anthony Coley, former Justice Department spokesperson under Attorney General Merrick Garland. Thank you all for being here, David. How big is this decision when it comes to Trump's bottom line and the way he presents himself as a master businessman? Well, I mean, to the bottom line, to the cash flow situation now, this decision, if it's upheld on appeal, will have the potential to wipe out all the ready cash that we know that he has. Now, that your reader, your listeners, your, your viewers shouldn't think, OK, Donald Trump's going to be walking down the Fifth Avenue with a barrel uh, instead of clothes in the next few days. He's still got a lot of properties. He still has a, a, a stock market vehicle, this uh, the, uh, Trump Truth Social, that they can eventually pull cash out of. He's going to survive as a—he's not going to go broke. But the business that we know of, the business that sort of brought him to uh, prominence, that gave him, brought him to the White House, could really be shrunk. It could really change. It could just be sort of a holding company for a few assets where Trump likes to visit. It's already shrinking, and this will just shrink it further. You mentioned about his reputation, too. I think people that still believe that Trump was this incredible, successful businessman, that he made this sort of whole business out of nothing, uh, this really shows that he's, you know, he, he built that business by lying to people. The, the judge says he built this business by defrauding even his lenders, by lying about tiny little things, like how big his own apartment was. But that was just sort of the lifeblood of the Trump, Trump organization was deceiving. And, and Catherine, Trump and his, and his attorney had already said they planned to appeal but the question is, will this stand up on appeal, this judgment? I think so. Many people were saying, what's taking the judge so long? And now we know why. 92 pages, very detailed. He went through, the judge went through the reasoning why he found the Trump organization, Donald Trump and his sons, libel for falsifying business records, for issuing false financial statements, for conspiring to uh, commit insurance fraud. So the judge was very detailed about why he didn't credit the testimony of these so-called experts. He said that they denied reality. The judge was very detailed why he was issuing, it's not a fine, it's called disgorgement, which is basically the wrongdoers have to give back their ill-gotten gains. And he said it's because the court intends to protect the financial market pace and the public as a whole by this decision, because Donald Trump, his co-defendants, refused to admit any error. And in the judge's viewpoint, that means they will continue to engage in this fraudulent activity. Mm -hmm. This family business now has to report to an independent monitor and now has a director of compliance has installed there. That's going to mm -hmm. drive them nuts. And it is a statement as AG, uh, the Attorney General James said, regular people can't lie to get mortgages or credit cards. So why should Donald Trump and his sons do that? You know, Anthony, some thought we might see a harsher punishment. I mean, right. all the things that Catherine was just talking about, plus the dollar amount, seemed right. kind of harsh to me. Right. But what likely went into the judge's decision here? So I think he was really trying to uh, make sure that the judgment in this case withstood an appeal. But I want to be very clear here. Trump should be breathing a sigh of relief. Oh. As harsh as this penalty is, um, I mean, the judge could have ordered um, the entire Trump organization to be dissolved. The court should have, could have ordered uh, Trump to be banned for life for, um, for what he did in this case. The judge didn't do that here. But stepping back for a second, this really feels like we have entered a new season of accountability, John Jonathan. I think back over what's happened over the last uh, several weeks, this E. Jean Carroll verdict, he mm -hmm. owes her $88 million. I think about what happened just yesterday. We now know that Donald Trump will face criminal trial over the within the next six weeks. And then, of course, you've got this massive, massive mm -hmm. judgment here that strikes at the heart of who Donald Trump purports to be. And we now know, as David was saying, that um, this entire brand was built on a foundation of lies and one of cheating. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we know this is the reason why he was actually in a courtroom he didn't right. really need to be in, because right. this strikes at his very core and how he views himself. You know, David, I'm going to pick up on, on some of the things that Catherine was talking about. It's not just a big fine. Uh, Trump's companies are banned 
from applying for loans at any New York financial institutions for three years. And as Catherine pointed out, an independent monitor will continue to oversee the company's financial deals. How much of an impact will that have on how Trump conducts business? Potentially a lot. You have to remember, this is a really, really small company run by a, a, a few family members and a few sort of lackeys beholden to them. It had been a very small core for so long to now have an outsider, a, you know, a non-family member, a, you know, a, a, an outsider of the Trump organization in the middle of it, asking questions, asking what they're doing. It's already disrupted their, their operations. It's already brought a lot of sunlight to this very dark corner of the business world. So I think it will continue to have a huge impact on them, in addition to the impact that's going to be brought by the need to find the cash for this judgment. You know, Anthony, let me come Anthony. back to you because, oh, oh, I'm sorry, David, were you saying more? Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, Anthony, Trump made it even um, more clear in his remarks tonight uh, that he's basically going to run against the legal system right. during his campaign, which he's already been doing, right. attacking judges and attorneys right. general, um, while also using the legal system to his advantage right. to try to d try to delay things and try to um, work his will over the legal system. You just said a moment ago that we have entered into a new, n new terrain right. where he's being held accountable. But is the way he t he's talking he's talking tonight is he still as dangerous today as he was before all these judgments started coming? Oh, absolutely so. I think Trump understands mm -hmm. he's embracing the fact that the road to the White House goes through the courthouse. Um, we see him leaning into that, and we see this, to your point, reflected in his language, right? He talks, um, he doesn't take responsibility for having any of the charges um, uh, that he's now facing and, and why they are brought about, right? But he's positioning himself as a victim. He says publicly, I'm getting indicted because of you, not for anything that I've done, that they're really after you. And I mm -hmm. think what we're going to see happen over the course, over the next several um, months and weeks as this campaign really heats up is Trump trying to use the court of public opinion to influence what happens inside the court of law. Reminder to your viewers, he only needs one juror, one to say not guilty. And then while that's going on, he's going to continue to try to delay, delay, delay these cases, hoping that he can somehow get to the White House and get out of these charges, all of them. You know, time flies when you're having a lot of fun talking with all the, with, with my panel and all these big, th these big cases. I'm going to jump ahead because in the three minutes that we have left, we've got to talk about Georgia. And we have to talk about um, uh, about yesterday's hearings and today's hearings. Catherine, um, the hearing got a lot of attention, uh, including from people who usually don't watch a televised court hearing. W what have you made of these last two days of, of testimony? First, with D.A. Fonnie Willis and what she had to say on the stand. And then today, her father taking the stand. Well, I have to say, it's, it's really sad because... You have this highly respected DA, clearly uh, experienced uh, expert in RICO, and a major case, one of the biggest case in the country. And she and her father are there publicly and having to talk about, quite frankly, her sex life. Now, having said that, the DA, you know, and I have respect for her, opened the door to this as soon as the relationship with Mr. Wade became much more than professional, he should have been removed from the trial team. That does not mean that she should be disqualified from the case. Mm. I do not believe she should be, nor do I think the court will remove her from the case, because so far the defense attorneys have not shown that there's an actual conflict of interest or that the defendants in some way are going to be denied a fair trial. But it is clearly an unforced error, and it's it's an appearance right. of impropriety. That does not mean she should be disqualified. Mm -hmm. a Anthony, you wrote a column right. saying Fonnie, saying uh, Fonnie Willis's testimony at least partially restored your faith in her. Explain. Well, she had to really reassert control over the narrative and um, not just rescue her reputation, but uh, rebut these lies and this innuendo uh, that 
we've seen come against her so uh, forcefully. Now, I will say, um, I'm not going to repeat what Catherine just said, but I want to put what's happening, Jonathan, in context. What's really going on right now is an offensive play by the defendants to muddy up this district attorney and to undermine faith in the underlying case against Donald Trump in his efforts to overturn the Georgia election. And I would remind your viewers, this um, case has already resulted in four guilty pleas in her her uh, relationship with Nathan Wade, as ill-advised as it was, has nothing to do with Donald Trump's efforts to try to steal an election.